Open the shipping box and remove the buddy closure by pulling on the internal cardboard retainer. Lay the box on a flat surface and open the front cover by using a straight blade screwdriver and disengage the captive screws by turning them one half turn counterclockwise. Open the box and remove all the components that ship with the box. The components will include two cable entry plates with slit foam inserts, feeder cable attachment hardware, wall mount kit, tie wraps, and transport tubing and felt foam tape kit. For the splice only version, the FOSS splice trays and the strain relief bracket will be pre-installed in the closure. Place the base against the wall and mark the four external mounting positions. Using a 764 bit, drill four pilot holes for the mounting screws. Pre-install the four mounting screws, leaving approximately a half inch of shank available. Place the closure on the wall and align the screws with the screw holes. With the screws aligned with the mounting tab holes, gently push the closure downward to allow the screw to slide into the elongated screw slot. Drive the screws home on each of the four mounting tabs. If the front cover is on the closure, remove the front cover by using a straight blade screwdriver and disengage captive screws by turning them one half turn counterclockwise. For outdoor wall mount installations, you may elect to install a protective cable skirt. The cable skirt can be installed below the buddy closure in the same manner as the buddy closure itself. The skirts are available in 12 inch and 24 inch heights and can also be stacked on top of each other. Loosen the skirt access door screws by turning them counterclockwise. You only need to loosen them do not remove the screws. Remove skirt access door. Place skirt underneath buddy closure and mark the four mounting hole locations. Using a 764 inch bit, drill four pilot holes in the marked locations. Fit the skirt to the wall, align the mounting holes, and secure the skirt to the wall. Place the skirt cover over the front of the skirt and secure it with the four screws. Do not tighten these as we will need to access this area once we start installing the cables. Next, we are going to start configuring the closure for what we want it to do. In this case, we are going to splice 12 drop fibers into the closure and splice them to 12 of 48 stranded fibers entering the cabinet in a mid-span configuration. Begin with removing the plastic knockouts from the rear of the main cable entry plate. Make sure to use the rearmost slot positions for the mid-span cable entry. To do this, separate the two pieces from each other and use a 9-inch lineman's pliers to remove the knockouts on each half by twisting and pulling on the knockout piece. Next, place the screw into the screw flange of the cable entry plate and slide the piece into the cable entry port. Once it is flush with the rear of the closure, screw in the plate. Now take the other half of the cable entry plate and remove the knockouts on that piece also. Once complete, set aside for later attachment. Install the cable bracket with two screws. Verify the proper orientation of the cable bracket as shown. Locate the two drop cable entry plates. Insert the plates into the respective slots and secure. Prepare the input cable and remove 63 inches or 1 meter 60 centimeters 
of the cable jacket from either the stub cable or a mid-span cable. Cut the strength members to a length of 2.17 inches or 5.5 centimeters from the jacket end. For loop cable, this is for both sides. Wrap a piece of felt tape one turn around the jacket end. Now cut the felt tape. Cut a piece of foam tape to the length specified in the installation instructions. The length is based on the cable diameter. Wrap the foam tape around the cable at 1.2 inches or 3 centimeters below the hose clamp tape at the place where the cable will touch the cable seal. Bring the cable into the box and first attach the strength member clamp to the cable's strength member. Ensure that the foam tape lays into the cable entry seal area. For a stub cable, use the right port. Install hose clamp onto cable and attachment bracket. Note, it is best to orient the hose clamps with the screw side facing outwards from the attachment bracket. Now repeat this process for the other cable. Take the other half of the cable entry plate and slide it into the cable port until it snaps into position. Identify the buffer tubes to be spliced and cut the buffer tubes on the field side of the fiber cable. Separate the buffers to be spliced from the expressed buffer tubes and place the spliced buffers onto the bottom of the slack basket. Lay the expressed buffer tubes over the tubes you just laid into the slack basket. Ensure that the splice buffer tube is in a good position in the slack basket and then route the buffer around the tray tower and route up to the splice tray entry point. Lay the buffer tube onto the splice tray and mark it just inside the tray where the tie wrap holes are located. Using a buffer tube cutting tool, cut the buffer tube at the indicated mark on the buffer and remove the cut piece. Next, cut a piece of felt tape and place it on the end of the buffer tube. Lay the buffer tube into the splice tray and fasten it to the tray using two small tie wraps. Cut the excess off the tie wraps. Route the fibers through the tray one full revolution and determine which splice pack to use. Store the fiber and replace the tray cover until fusion splicing is performed at a later time. Now perform these procedures for every additional buffer tube and splice tray in the closure. Prepare the drop cables by removing the jacket of each drop cable or pigtail over a length of 50 inches or 127 centimeters. Also cut and remove the aramid yarn in the cable. Wrap a piece of foam tape around a bundle of up to 12 drop cables or pigtails. Locate a transport tube and place up to 12 fibers in the transport tube 
and draw the tube up the fibers until they reach the cut end of the drop cables. Secure the bundle of drop cables or pigtails at the top of the splice tray basket. Two bundles of up to 12 drop cables or pigtails can be secured to the splice tray basket. When attaching the first bundle, make sure there is space available for the second set of drop cables to be secured to the splice tray basket. Again, pull the transport tube up to the drop cable jackets and then route the other end of the transport tube around the tray tower and up to the side of the splice tray opposite of the buffer tube side. Place the felt tape around the end of the transport tube. Now affix the transport tube to the splice tray using two tie wraps. Route the fibers into the tray one revolution and determine the splice pack to use for splicing. Place a tie wrap toward the bottom of the slack basket and affix the transport tube to it. Install tray cover over splice tray and push up into position. Using the supplied Velcro strap, secure the splice trays to the slack basket. Take any slack out of the drop cables by making a loop inside the closure by running the drops up and around the slack management ring and then tying them together with a Velcro strap. Divide the drop cables and route them through the drop cable entry plates. Remove the backing from the designation label and place it onto the inside of the buddy front cover. Apply even pressure to eliminate any bubbles. Install the front cover and lock the unit by turning the captive screws one half turn clockwise.